Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Taco video. In this video, I'm going to talk about four of the starting weapons that I would highly recommend that you learn, get used to, and particularly if you're new at the game, it's going to have a, a big impact on how to gear up later on, because you'll always have that budget loadout and way to kill people uh, by using these guns. And so if you ever run a little bit of drive uh, money, you've always got something to go back to. So guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So the first one we have is the Moser. Now this one is available from level 1 Propor. Uh, it's um, available straight off the, the get-go. You don't need to do anything special for it. The Infantry Moser, however, can't you can't put a PU side on it. Uh, and you won't be able to do that until level 2 Propor. But this gun, uh, since it's been implemented, has been a real game changer on budget loadouts. Uh, you've seen, or we've seen a very drastic reduction in, in hatchlings going in because the Mosin is so powerful for how cheap it is. Uh, for 23,000 rubles, you buy the LPS GZH ammo from Propor Level 1. Now, this ammo has had a buff recently. Uh, it does um, 84 damage, uh, just raw damage, and it has 55 pen. In my opinion, even before the buff, this was the most powerful ammo in the game for the uh, Mosin, and I really do believe it doesn't uh, belong on level 1 Propor because the way I see it is it's got the damage to one shot the chest and head so as long as they're probably using a gen 4 or less you can pretty much one shot nearly every time on the uh, on the chest uh, I haven't done any trials on the gen 4 but I have seen and been the, the receiving end of dying to one shots with this uh, to this gun uh, secondly the 7N1 ammo, which was the higher flesh damage, was is only 2 more flesh damage for 10 less pen. So it doesn't really make that big a difference. Um, and that pen will pretty much go through every helmet in the game. So the LPS GZH is an amazing round for this gun. And if you can get good at using the Mosin, um, you can carry... Like, this will be your budget loadout. You don't need to put a... a um, you don't need to put a rig on because you can fit the ammo in your pockets and you, you can just shove it straight into the top. And uh, overall, this gun will just shred faces and chest pretty much anywhere you are you go. So you can use it close range, long range. Unfortunately, if you do miss a shot close range, you probably have to do a bit of dancing to get around the second shot. But it is seriously a it was a game changer when it's been implemented into the game. Um, and it's just yeah, it's still one of the most powerful guns in the game. However, because it's a bolt action, it's a bit slower. Um, if you do shoot it, you can hold down the left click, if you didn't know that, so you can actually see um, the like the shot afterwards, and then let go of the button, so that way you can actually uh, get more of an observation on your target. After that, you um, just bolt like normal. Um, but yeah, the Mosin, definitely one of those guns you should, uh, you should practice a bit earlier. Now, all the guns I'm going to talk to you right now are available on scavs as well, um, so you actually will find them over time, and they'll be um, handy to have, because... What, like they're always a backup so you, you could even go in with a pistol kill a scav and you'll get one of these guns generally there are other ones that do spawn on scavs but i'll talk about them towards the end now the next one i'm going to talk about is actually available at skier level two however you will find them all over the place particularly on factory it's the mp153 shotgun now uh, the difference between the 153 and the 133 uh, which is available on um, ski level one is the 153 will actually shoot like without having to pump between the action you'll be able to fire all four to eight rounds instantly or technically five to nine rounds instantly without having to pump between each shot and then on the 133 it's actually individually between each shot uh, something you can take into account here is if you actually do find a 133 on the ground with a um with a six round mag you can actually take off the um the six round mag and it will fit straight into the actual 153. So you can actually um, make your 153s a six rounder, which technically holds seven because there's one in the chamber, um, if you really want to, um, by collecting shotguns when you're in raids. Now, the best way to use a 153 shotgun is if you know the person is unarmored, go for the chest and head. If you know they're armored, you pretty much have to go for either the face hitbox or you need to go for the legs. Now. Um, there's a lot of argument on what ammo you should use. Some people say you should use buckshot. Some people say you should use slugs. Personally, I always use, buck, use buckshot. And the reason behind it is if you're lining up a target and uh, you miss by a millimeter, like I'm talking one millimeter um, with a slug, you have missed the target. But if you uh, line up a target, you just missed by a millimeter with buckshot, half your pellets will probably still hit the target. So if you're going for a head 
and you just miss to the side, there should be enough pellets that will still kill the target. And um, if you go for, you know, legs, sometimes you'll hit both legs, sometimes you'll hit one. But if with a slug, you might actually just shoot between the legs because they were running. So I feel like buckshot is more successful overall. Um, you do do more damage and you have higher pen with the, the slug ammo. Um, the buckshot only have three pen, whereas the slugs have 21. Um, but overall, personally, I think the buckshot is the better round to choose. Um, something that hasn't been implement, implemented in the game well is the blunt damage. They try putting it into the game at one stage, and it, you're pretty much using the shooter's ammo in the game, and you're killing people instantly. You can put a slug or a buckshot point blank into a high-level helmet or chest, and it will do absolutely no damage. So that's why when you're using a buckshot or even a slug, you should probably aim for the legs if they're geared, and if they're, like I said before, if they're just you know running around with a pistol or a Mosin or whatever, you can go for the chest and head. Um, you might get caught out sometimes. You won't actually see that they're wearing a packer or something. You'll go for the chest, and um, you won't drop them straight away because the, the packer can pretty much absorb all the buckshot rounds. So it, this, this takes a little bit of practice, but once you get good at the MP153 and you can find them everywhere, uh, it's quite amazing how easy you can drop players um, going for those legs. Uh, go prone. Line up their legs. If they're running away from you, it's the easiest thing in your life because you'll hit them in the legs straight away. Then they'll um, they'll get stuck stationary or they'll be trying to move or pop their painkillers and you'll just get like these easy pickings. Um, when you are running around trying to find an MP153 shotgun, you can find them with eight rounds as well. So just keep an eye out for that. You will be able to find them with uh, the PK06 scopes on top. Uh, and it is quite a versatile gun in killing scabs, players, and the like. So it's it's really good or, or like overall for me. Uh, it's generally my go-to gun because uh, for the, the the budget setups because you can also just chuck the, the buckshot shells into your pockets. You don't need to put a rig on. So you actually can make more money by grabbing rigs um, in the raid as well. Now, the next one I have is the SKS. Now, this used to be one of my favorite guns in the game, or the OP SKS, which is the further model of this. Um, there's currently three in the game. There's the SKS, there's the uh, OP SKS, and the TAPCO SKS. You can find all three of them on SCAVs. Um, the SKS is the most common one. It's got the brown stock. Um, the difference between this is you can't actually put a PSO or a dovetail mount at the back to put a PSO site or OKP7 site, but you can get the SOCOM rail at the front, and um, you'll be able to put a, a forward site on this. And it, you can find them on SCAVs as well. Now, the reason why the SKS is so good uh, as a budget uh, weapon is the PS ammo has 57 damage and 33 pen. Now, if when you look at the fact of um, damage and pen, the PS ammo will get through the majority of helmets quite quickly. Um, you won't get through Elton's very well, but you, like your GZH's or your Kivers, anything with a face shield besides the Elton and the, ki the killer helmet, you can get through pretty much all these quite comfortably. Uh, and because of that, it is a very powerful gun to use against uh, geared people. So you are running against a lot of squads, and you can get better at shooting the SKS than the average person. It is a very good gun to use. Now, there is an issue in the game at the moment where when you're firing at semi-auto and you're clicking, you'll actually, the faster you click, the slower you'll shoot. I've, I've tested this out a few times. I haven't got the exact numbers right now. But if you go into a raid and you want to practice this, try it in offline mode. Um, I don't know, it would probably be a little bit better in offline mode, so maybe not offline, but um, you tap as fast as you can and your gun will only shoot a certain speed, but if you just back it off a little bit, it'll shoot a little bit faster. Now, that is kind of some error in the game mechanics and it has been reported multiple times. Um, we've just got to wait and see what happens with that. Um, it's, but it's like why you see the RSS can shoot extremely fast, but the SKS doesn't. Now, SKS used to be one of the most powerful uh, guns in the game with the OP SKS. You go one-tapping helmets all over the shop. Um, but at the moment, it's still sitting in a bit of a gray zone. The argument here is some people would say you're better off going with a, um, a Vepa 136. The issue with that is the Vepa 136 is only available from skier level 2, whereas the SKS is skier level 1. Now, you could use either of these. Um, the Vepa will have the 30-round mags. Also not available to Propor Level 2, so that you have to look at your options there. Personally, I think SKS is really handy and good to use. They're available over um, plenty of scabs throughout Rage. You'll find them. You'll find plenty of mags. I always just, if I see an extra couple of mags, I'll chuck them in my backpack and rig. Fill the rig till completion, so when you do reload and you throw the mag, it doesn't matter because you've already got an extra mag there. Um, it's just something I do to speed up, having to worry about reloading mags. There's the options there.
And just a small side note, if you're a newer player, um, there are other ammos for 7.62 by 39. Um, with the the PS ammo, I would just stick with PS and BP. The Tracer is uh, less pen and a little bit more damage. And then the US ammo, which is the ultra, sorry, the subsonic ammo, it, does, it isn't any quieter. It's got a lot lower muzzle velocity, so it means it comes out of the barrel slower and drops and hits the ground. So you've got to aim higher to make it hit. And... It is just trash. It's called US, and we always call it ultra shit. So I would just stick with this, the PSMO available at Propor Level 1. Now lastly, we've got the PP-19. Now this one is the go-to gun for me on labs. I wouldn't use this gun on any map besides labs, pretty much. You can buy this from Propor Level 1. Um, it will come with its 30-round mags. You can buy the 30-round mag from Propor Level 1, and then you can put a Cobra uh, reflex sight on it as well. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, and you will need to take a rig or a backpack or both uh, to make this work well. Um, I would just probably buy the scav vest and then try and loot a backpack, or if you've got a spare backpack, and that way you can uh, substitute mags in. Um, but if you haven't seen my Terra Labs uh, like lab loadouts and stuff like that, because of the way the damage works on the 9x19 PST GZH, um, it's a very fast firing round from a PP19 with a very minimal recoil. If you get used to shooting this gun, it is an absolute face ripper when it comes to the Raiders. And you can um, peek corners, quickly shoot a few bullets into a skate, uh, face of a Raider, and you'll drop him in one shot. Now the argument between I get a lot is, do you use PST, uh, PSO, or the Luger ammo, or the RIP ammo? Um, pretty much, the PST GZH ammo has 56 damage and 18 pen. Now, all the other ammos have less pen, but more damage. If you shoot someone in the chest, um, and they're not wearing armor, they have 80 health. So if you do two bullets with 56 damage, you're killing them in one sh in two shots, sorry. If you use any other ammos, none of them do 80 damage. So you're still gonna need to do two shots to drop them. The only exception to this is the rip ammo, but then you're using a very expensive round uh, in hope that they're not wearing any armor. The other thing is when you go to the head, the head has 35 health. If you shoot someone in the head with any of the uh, 9x19 ammos, you'll dr drop them in one shot. So this really comes down to, is you, are you shooting them in the head or the chest? Now, this gun is purely based for killing raiders. Um, it's great for killing hatchlings and moslings, but overall, you want to aim for the head and practice aiming for the head for this gun. If a raider has a face shield, now it's either a Kiva, uh, Kiva face shield or the GZH face shield, this has... Um, it's, it's, I think they're level 3 on average. I'm going by memory right now. Now, the 9x19 PST GZH has about 18 pen. This has a chance to penetrate those face shields. Now, it might take 3 to 5 shots to get it, but at least you have a chance to get through it. Um, it does work against them, and I, I do kill Raiders quite often with it, but sometimes you will get um, screwed over a little bit, and you might die because of it. But overall, this is your best chance of getting through those face shields. If you're using any of the other ammos, you might as well just be going for the legs because they're not gonna, you're not going to get through that face shield at all. So uh, for my recommendation, if you want to get uh, good at using the going to labs with budget loadouts to kill raiders uh, and in quick succession, the PB-19 is my favorite go-to gun for that. And it's a great one for you guys to practice with if you want to get better at shooting people in the head. Uh, if you do want to progress to a faster firing, better accuracy gun, uh, the MP5 is the next best, uh, next step up, and you will find these on Raiders. So you could collect a few of these to practice shooting on Raiders. So guys, I've waffled on a bit for here, but hopefully there's some good information for, particularly for the newer players uh, trying to get around what guns they should be using early on and in budget loadouts, and in trying to uh, make up a bit of a cash flow so they can start using their um, their geared loadouts. Uh, one of the things I want to try and start doing is I'm, I'm, I want to build a series on helping out new players. Uh, we'll have a playlist with all the, the guides in it. Um, I re want, really want to redo a lot of my older uh, map guides because a lot of the things have changed on them. And then that way, building a bit of a database for new players to be able to find some new information or old information that's still just uh, relevant but just a lot harder to find. So, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I do stream on Twitch six days a week, uh, sometimes seven. Go down the link below. Give me a follow over there if you've got any Tarkov questions. Feel free to hit me up on my live stream or down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time. Eyes wide open, I stand alone.